Hello and welcome to this fourth and final lecture in the design pattern series uh, in software engineering. In this lecture I will talk about architectural patterns and um, these architectural patterns they deal with um, how to design systems to be easy to understand or to be modular and flexible and modifiable, how to communicate design with um, other stakeholders and it's also a way of designing software from a quality attributes uh, perspective. Uh, I'm not going to cover all of them and there are of course uh, even more probably and um, so I'm going to cover the you know some of the basic ones uh, specifically layered pattern, broker pattern, model view control pattern, pipe and filter pattern, service oriented architecture pattern. If you want to know more about the rest, there is information online that you can find. So the layer pattern is uh, often a model being used when communicating design, when making the first architecture, when trying to uh, distribute the behavior between separate model modules, etc. So uh, it's a way of, of creating a well-documented separation of concerns and like a module diagram. Um, uh, you've probably seen, um, if, if you worked in software uh, development, you've probably seen one of these um, layered patterns or layered exam layered model diagrams where separate uh, concern or, or implementations are very separated between specific modules, etc. Now, there is, of course, a drawback where these being, uh, these are quite generalized, uh, but they're often used as a first concept just to have some form of basic idea of, of what the architecture will be and what the services and features of the system will be. So um, the relations between the different uh, layers are like an allowed to use perspective. So uh, um, security are allowed to use all of the layers in, in this perspective, while uh, data sources are only allowed to use the data access components, for instance. Um, constraints, as I already mentioned, um, they are not so detailed that you can create an architecture from them. Um, and um, they, uh, um, they are some limitations as well when it comes to, to how they are structured um, and they're allowed to use relationships. Also, this, these layers add upfront cost if you actually do implement it in terms of these layers. Uh, the next pattern I'm going to go through is the broker pattern. Um, and this is something that is quite common online whenever there are multiple services that are needs to interoperate, when there are communication between uh, distributed services and multiple servers, etc. So um, it's a way of structuring uh, the systems and basically um, there's a broker that handles different communication that can basically register, register available service, re register uh, clients or, or to local clients and basically make that connection. And then whether the communication then happens peer to peer, um, that is not specified in the parent itself. The brokers basically just um, acts as a service discoverer or, or well, it's acts as a broker, basically. Um, so uh, some of the weaknesses that you need to consider when dealing with brokers is that they add latency, of course, it's a bottleneck, and it's also one point of failure. Like if the broker goes down, then the service and clients won't find each other. Um, so that adds a bit of complexity. Uh, it's also a vulnerability for security attacks. So if you can actually take down the, the broker, you can harm the system. Uh, third one I would like to go through is uh, very briefly is the model view controller. Um, this is very common on web pages, for instance. It basically, you have um, a, a set of data or, or information that you would like to present, but maybe you want to present this information in several different ways, or or you want to modify it frequently. Maybe you have um, like different language settings, etc. There, are, there are lots of different uses for the model view control, and it's quite popular as well uh, online. Um, a, a basic example, or or you know example of, of how this would look like. So the module basically contains all the data. Um, 
and then the view um, basically um, observes this data. The controller um, does performs operations or, or changes the state of the data. And of course, then the, the user can then view uh, whatever views are being presented. Um, the benefit of doing something like this is that they decouple the views from actual functionality and, and operation of the data, which makes it like um, you can use templates online. Whenever you do uh, web pages, you often see these templates um, that only contain like the graphical representation or how to structure or where to present things. But the actual operation of the data and, and the control of the data happens in the controller part, and, and then you often have a combination with the database or something like that. Uh, a simplified version of, of the same diagram looks like this. So the model updates the view, the user can see the view, and the user uses the controller, and the controller manipulates the data in the model. Um, the weakness, well, setting up a model view controller, it's not very difficult, but if you have a very simple page, it might not be worth it. So um, it is typically for for uh, slightly larger pages or, or slightly larger systems where you do use modification or you do modify um, the look and feel or, or modify the content uh, and you have different templates for different things, maybe. Um, and this abstraction may not be good for all kinds of services either. So that's something you need to consider. Then the fourth one, pipe and filter pattern. If uh, for people who are uh, used to uh, using Unix command prompts or, or the terminal window, you've probably encountered something similar where you can pipe a number of different commands together. Um, so it's basically when you have a lot of different um, commands, you would like to create like a stream of events, you would like to connect them together. Um, and you would like to transform one operation to another and, and, uh, and so on. So something that is reusable, something that is loosely coupled, um, something that is generic that you can just put together like a pipe and a filter. Um, for the for Unix uh, people here, um, so you've probably seen that. So you have ls listing the, the files, and then you pipe it with a grep august. So you basically, in that list, you try to find all the lines uh, that contain og, and then you sort them, uh, and then you basically split them, um, in this case, into several pages if, they, if there's a long match. So this would be the result. So you only find lines with August in them. And now we are displaying 74% of all the matches and then there are more matches, of course. So uh, basically you have simple commands. The output of one command goes into the input of another. So that puts some constraints on the interfaces between these commands. So they need to be fairly generic. And uh, so you need to agree on some common type uh, some common data being passed from one connecting pipe to another. And then um, I have uh, the final one that I'm going to go through in this uh, part is the service oriented architecture pattern. Now there's lots of information online for this and originally um, it was not so much used for web or actually it wasn't used at all for web so it was designed uh, for a completely different purpose. Oh, it was designed basically to create um, interoperable systems that could collaborate with each other, that could communicate with each other. And it wasn't for web, it was for other systems. And it's been around for quite a long time. Um, so the idea anyways of service oriented architecture or SOA for short, uh, is basically to um, um, create some form of interoperability between uh, different services, different providers, and have them communicate with each other uh, to create um, more complex services by combining different parts. Uh, so they're all about distributed components, different running on different platforms, uh, maybe even having different implementation languages and so on. So this SOA pattern is about making them all fit together using a common language, so to speak. Often the common language might be XML or uh, VSDL or um, something like that. 
Um, so this is, you know, what a typical SOA uh, pattern could look like, um, having a number of different services you combine into, in this case, an adventure builder. Um, so you combine the different services and access to data and, and so on. And each of the services perform their task and you can you know, combine the different the output from one. Very similar in that case, in that regard to the pipe and filter pattern, where you combine the output from one and, and can create something more advanced, something bigger um, by using another service on top of that. Um, so our services can be quite complex to build um, and um, one service can of course uh, evolve, so maybe it won't be compatible anymore. So that is something that you need to consider as well. Like you don't, if if you combine a number of different services from different uh, developers, they might change the implementation. Uh, you have no control over this. There's also some performance overhead uh, on top of this. So I thank you very much for uh, listening to my lectures. And if you want to know more, there's some information online there and my inform contact information as well.